This podcast is sponsored by Ramp. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's business cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp for free. Just go to ramp.com slash easy. Ramp.com slash easy. R-A-M-P dot com slash easy. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC. Terms and conditions apply. Good morning. Happy Saturday, everybody. It's Brian Prudhomme. It's Dave Cook. We are the Northland Sports Page. Happy, very dreary Saturday. We'll try to be a ray of sunshine until about noon, which that may be very difficult when you consider the pro sports spectrum in Minnesota right now. The Minnesota Twins are terrible, and that's being kind. The Minnesota Wild had their season end rather unceremoniously. And that's being kind. Right. The Timberwolves, in the mind of some, have the worst possible round one matchup they could get. And then the Vikes will see. We need a week yeah. to figure it <laughs> out, right? Give us a moment, right. Right. And then I'll be doing baseball in 30-degree weather. I was going to say, <laughs> speaking of a dreary day, you get to spend a lot of it quasi-outdoors because you can shut the door, but oh, you'll yeah. be exposed to the air. You know, you and I haven't been there regularly in a while. Right. And, and it... And, and I'm me. strangely comfortable with that. You it, have been. Yeah, I've been there recently quite a bit. And you forget that the door to the pu- public address booth can be shut. Yes. So we were there Tuesday night, right? And it was, no, yeah, Tuesday night. And it was windy as all get up. And uh, at, no, it was, it was Thursday night. Uh, windy is everything. So you've been busy because they played multiple times this week. Right. Windy is everything. And so at, after about the third inning of trying to find anything that's heavy to hold down the papers, I looked and I said, it just shut the door. What do you mean? Just shut the door. Just we can pull shut it the shut. door. Just pull it. Yep. I, not, it, I was I was mad at myself, not at anybody else, because because I mean, you we hadn't thought of for, that earlier. We were there for almost a decade. Yeah. Where was that, that one I at first pitch? Right. No doubt about it. Speaking of first pitch, it's an early one today. You'll miss it because of your dedication to this show. Yep. It's noon o'clock start. It's senior day. Seniors are uh, proudly announced during in between the games. Uh, they, you know, the Saints have played pretty well. Their right. pitching has been pretty good. And so, if you're if you're hankering for a for a double header and you've got your winter jackets out still, head on down to the way. I was going to say right now, and I love the Minnesota Twins and I love CSS as well. Right now, if you've got the choice, where are you going? Because you know, some people have said, I think facetiously on social media, that a collegiate team could beat the Twins right now. Bang for your buck, I might be watching the Saints. Uh, bang for your buck, you will be. But if you want concessions, Brian, you probably need to go to see the Twins. Game. Right. I was going to say, Wade, as far as I know, doesn't have the nacho helmet during it, college games. It not only doesn't have the nacho helmet, it doesn't have the, the big sliding gate up. So, I mean, your, your uh, concessions are from Quick Trip. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned the door being able to be shut for public address, though, because all of those years that we did Huskies games together, you as public address, me as webcast play by play, I was unbelievably envious of you being able to change your climate. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Based on shutting a door. I had no escape. That's true. But that room is uh, always wet and humid. So in those days where it was 90 and humid, yeah, it was 95 and twice as humid. Yeah, you felt that without yeah. question. So this is going to sound like a cheap shot, but hear me out. Because on gloomy really? days, well, just just hold on. Because on the surface, yes. Because I'm going to finish the first sentence and you're going to go, gee, thanks. On gloomy days like this, I think of you. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. So that's, that's maybe shot. not I a cheap too. shot. Because I was just thinking to myself, we didn't really get winter. Okay. We got one week Yesterday. at the end of March that was basically winter. Yesterday, sort of. The monsoon earlier this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, what have you. That was like November. Right. But looking at the next week worth of weather forecasted days, it doesn't look like we're going to really stray from 50 degrees and cloudy either. And I thought, okay, we didn't get winter. That was good. What if we don't get anything but 50 degrees and cloudy for the rest of the calendar year? I would be super bummed. Who would be thrilled? The gentleman across the table from me. Yeah, that wouldn't bother me at all. That'd be great, actually. I mean, every day is comfortable. Um, yeah, it would be good to get sun every so often. Otherwise, I'd take the vitamin D pills. But besides that, I think yeah, that sounds perfectly acceptable. Absolutely. For you. 
Speaking of <laughs> dreary times, as you know, my mother's had some health challenges yes. the last couple of months. Yep. We hope that she's turned a corner, and I think she's getting there. But at the same time, as dreary as her outlook had been, kind of a bond between us with all the senior living, hospital visits. One thing that we could do, and I don't know if you do this in your family, is watch the Game Show Network. And for some reason, that put a smile on her face. Is that strange, or is that just somebody who loves trivia? I uh, I don't have any idea. I don't know if my mom's ever watched a game show. Really? So yeah, no that that was not in our we we so back when we were Generation X and and we didn't know there was well generations, we still are and we didn't know there were generations. Uh, we would come home after school and nobody would be there, and that's when you fired up the game shows just to keep you company for a little bit. Right. And I think that's kind of what my mom tended to do, like sitting in a hospital room and you go, "What's on TV?" You tend to find Jeopardy. Wheel of Fortune. Price is Right was being homesick from school. Talk about oh, keeping you company. Yep. Your chaperone was maybe Chicken Soup and certainly Bob Barker. Yeah, no, that's 100% right. That one and the Pyramid was was always on right after that back home. So it was those two back to back. Right. Or so Card Sharks then when I got a little old. Card Sharks was fun. Higher or lower, you had a 50-50 shot every time. <laughs> I like the game shows that really don't make you think right. sometimes. But the thought of game shows, because you might say, boy, Brian, you pulled that topic out of midair. And I kind of did. But game shows got me thinking last week because I'd watched so many of them. I like them myself, but I've also watched them with family. I started thinking, is there a way to relate game shows to sports? And if you think about it and get kind of silly enough with it, there is. Oh, yeah. Think of the, think of the moments in uh, our sports history that you can look back and say, yeah, that played out like a weird game show. Right. Or how many bonus rounds did we lose? Because if you think of the four Super Bowls, if you think of the first game 163, if you think of every second round playoff except for yeah. one in the history of the Wolves and the Wild. Yeah, and, and a Minnesota fan itself could be called Name That Tune because we can name that tune in one note. Like all, all the things we've talked about, if you hear the first note of that story, you're like, I know that. Right. Or it could be whose line is it anyway? Because you could say something and go, which team does that pertain to? And you could go, well, all of them. This might be difficult. <laughs> That's exactly correct. Exactly. Correct. So before we get into game shows today for the opening topic, because we're going to, we hit the jackpot with our sponsors as far as game shows go. You know, we really have, Brian. Uh, and since we're talking about hitting jackpots and our sponsors, let's start with the original jackpot then, right? Arola Architecture Studio, our original sponsor and the one that's got us through rough right. times. And you know where would we be without him sitting at home on a Saturday? Right, and and you know you said about the prices right when you when it was the you're sick that's that's how you knew you were staying home as the prices right came on. Right. Well, the only reason we're still on, he's kind of our sick day, right? I was going to say though, with all due respect to Drew Carey, isn't it just Bob Barker when you think of the prices right? I know it's still yes. on, but I go so. Yeah. No, it that's correct. Okay. Drew Carey is like the. I'm sure he's a wonderful guy. Never met him. I have a similar physique to him. He, isn't he the guy, though, that originally took uh, took the um, uh, family feud to? Or is he specifically to this? That one? might be right. I'm not sure, though, because yeah, there's, sure. there's been a boatload of family feud hosts. Right. I right, just know right. Richard Dawson was the most passionate, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Richard Dawson. Richard Dawson was a fantastic game show host. Yes. If you want to know the difference between humor in the 70s and today, it's kind of Richard Dawson. <laughs> sure is. All right. Hoops Brewing. Mike Regan at Christensen Group Insurance. Blackwoods, including the locations on London Road, Blackwater, Downtown, Tavern on the Hill, in Proctor and in Two Harbors, Mount Royal Bottle Shop, Stewart's Bike Sports and Trophies, Comfort Systems of Duluth, Kohler Toyota and Kohler Hyundai, Advantage Emblem and Screen Printing, and Kraus Heating and Cooling, your carrier, HVAC, authorized dealer. Absolutely grateful for each of those sponsors. They've been with us for weeks on end, especially a Roll Architecture Studio, as you said, because without him, we just simply wouldn't be. We had a few yep. wobbly years there. As we make our way to almost seven. Yeah, God, almost seven years is crazy. It is crazy to think about. But so when I came up with this game show topic idea, I was excited about it because I do like them. I watch them a lot. But the first call I had to make was to you and go, do you watch enough where you can do this? And you kind of went, yeah, but it's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. But then when you think of the names of shows, whether you know what goes on in them or not, it's kind of irrelevant. 
You look at the name of a show and you go, that works, that tracks. Well, and not just that, but as I was thinking more about it, some of the personalities are tied into that game show play in this too. Right. Um, one of the, and, and I'm sure we'll have more conversations about this, but the, the deal, no deal, right? There's a lot of stuff that you could do that. But having the weird host, Howie Mandel, isn't terribly unlike having a weird general manager. A weird owner, owner a weird or, GM, yeah, a exactly. weird coach. There's so a lot it, of ways to go with so this. So it twists that whole game show to who was the person in charge. You talked about Drew Carey or you talked about Richard Dawson. Right. You know, Richard Dawson took the Dallas or took the stars to Dallas, right? So you know, a little bit of a creep, a little bit of all that stuff. But, right. Uh, he certainly kissed us goodbye. That's all we know. Did. That's all we know about that. So what we're going to do today is. I don't think we're going to assign one no. to each pro team because it's too hard to do just one. I think what we're going to do is just kind of bandy about different themes that could have worked. I think the question is, which team do you want to start with? Well, let's start Let's start with the team that's done. Let's start with the Wild because we can get in. I was going to say, be more quick. specific because we could debate whether or not the Twins are. No, We'll can, know by Thursday <laughs> whether or not the Vikings are. Yeah, let's, start, well, let's start with the Wild because legitimately they're done. Okay. So for the Minnesota Wild... I actually started with the love connection because it only gave me reason number 172 to bring up the same statement that I've made over and over. No matter what happens to this team, there is a segment of the population that will love them unconditionally. So I figured they work so hard. Chuck Woolery and his will be back with two and two. The love connection was the first spot I went for the Minnesota Wild because, again, the unconditional were the state of hockey. So we love these guys no matter what. It just rang true for me. Well, I've got a different answer, but doggone it, Brian. You, you hit something on the head here. Dana liked that 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 game, and she loved the Wild number 22. So they'll be ah, back in 2-2. Two and two. So her Chuck Lowry 2-2 two and two is yeah, a big Nino. deal. Is he overlooked as a game show host, by the way? Because Nino? he hosted everything. Oh, Chuck Willery? Yes. Yeah, he's the he's kind of the guy that took the he 70s He had lingo, humor. he had Scrabble, he had the love connection. I'm sure he had he, others. He took that 70s humor and dialed her down for the 80s and 90s and, and just became... Cool enough to right. be cool and creepy enough to be creepy. There's a fine line between each one. So, Did you, you go deal or no deal? Because that was the other one I thought of for this group. No, actually, I went double dare, the Nickelodeon game ah, show. Because, because we got slimed in the end? Well, because Bill Guerin keeps you know, putting these old timers on there and giving them contracts and no moves. And so it's like at some point, yeah, he's, he's setting himself up to get slimed or to win. One of those two things is going to happen because he's got all this stuff going at the same time and he has to decide – you know, which one I'm going to take a chance right. on, which can get me in trouble. Seeing that taking a chance is kind of why I went deal or no deal, because I thought, okay, the Minnesota Wild were front page news back on that famous 4th of July yeah. where there were two major free agents in the National Hockey League, and lo and behold, the state of hockey got them both. But in hindsight, to borrow a double dare, we got slimed a little bit. We did. So looking back at where this team is now or where this team may have to be heading, do you go deal or no deal? Should you have taken the plunge? I think you have to say yes, but again, hindsight 2020, and you go deal yeah, or no deal. No, you that deal you're doing 100 times out of 100 at that point. Without, I think without so. Without hindsight, yeah. 100%. Without hindsight, 100%. Well, can you, can you put that asterisk on a lot of things? Without hindsight, let's do this. Okay, perfect. On, on almost Without everything. hindsight, we talk about without our sponsors. Without hindsight, we don't have a show because the opening <laughs> topic is almost always, oh, we're going in hindsight again today. <laughs> without hindsight, the uh, you run Darren Nelson on a different route so he doesn't step in front of Anthony Carter. The Vikings go to his I'm surprised the Wild headline hasn't been in hindsight with it spelled differently oh, if they keep John very Hines. Nice. Very nice. Well, they're going to have to now because he's coaching. Because he's uh, USA. Yeah. 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 Interesting choice. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, the other thing about the other thing about the Wild is this is really a spot for Price is Right. Right? Because they, they, don't, they only have so much money, right? Right. If they go over that, they lose. Right? So you got to try to be as close as possible to that number knowing that you're $14 million in the hole. So you you're making bids on on these different uh you know on these different people on different players and you're and you're just trying to set everything up to make sure that number is on or close and not Because over. you have no choice in the matter. Yeah. So I wanted to do one that wouldn't qualify, but it made me wish that Fixer Upper was a game show. <laughs> because I thought if the Wild have nothing else going for them and at times it looked that way, damn they have a nice house. Oh, and usually at nice. the end of Fixer Upper, so does somebody. They have 
one good line, three good defensemen, and three young kids who might be pretty good, plus right. a future goalie. So do we have to go, are you smarter than a fifth grader instead? <laughs> oh, that you know what? I didn't think about that I've one. got that one in my back pocket for another team. I so bet you can guess gonna, which one. I'm going to toss one in real quick. Okay, That's, one more for the wild. Nope, nope. I'm going to take a quick quick turn, a one-time turn. Okay. Uh, college football is let's make a deal. Yes, now college, it is for college everybody. Football is let's make a deal. Yes, you want offer one, two, or three. What's and behind you, door number one? Yep, exactly. Correct. Unfortunately, it is. That's yeah. a great pull. Yep, it hundred percent is because then the difference is now that the NCAA yesterday came through and said, ah, no more waiting time to transfer. Like you're gonna make, you're gonna play that game, and then you're instantly gonna be able to step away and try a different set of doors. Right. I've seen on uh, Twitter multiple times that Vince McMahon meme where he's choking back tears. Yep. And today, multiple times, it captioned, do you remember the old days when players used to play at one school for four years and it was Vince McMahon choking back tears of, ah, the good old days. Yeah, isn't that true? The good old days, like right. 18 months ago. So uh, let's let's uh, move along, Brian. Let's, let's yeah, go. Yeah, who's to, next? Let's go to the Twins. Do we have to? Right. That's I think that's the, that's the thing with the Twins. Um, the first place I went was Price is Right. Oh, you because... Did. If they don't have the right price tag on somebody, they aren't even going to make a move. And the other reason I went Price is Right, and I hope people chuckle at this because I did, and I'm sure it looks silly because I'm on a walk, a distance walk last Sunday, and I'm thinking of this in my head, and I chuckled at myself. It's always bad when you laugh at your own jokes, but it's even worse when you're walking by yourself on the sidewalk and just start laughing. (laughs) Sometimes we do see that outside the Holiday Center here, but it it just felt different. But I went Price is Right because Price is Right, I believe, is the only game show that people routinely bid $1 and sometimes win because darn it, the twins would certainly do that if they could. And they've won it twice. Well, and see, this is, this is where my lack of game show names gets me, but what's the one with the lifelines? Who wants to be a millionaire? All right. So the twins, that's a great one for the twins, because if you want to be a multimillionaire, you're looking in the wrong direction. Well, not just that, but how about this? Um, all right. So boy, oh boy, we screwed up our pitching staff. Can I get a lifeline? Yeah. Can I can I use my only lifeline and try to find another guy off the scrap peep somewhere? So that was my first thought was was uh that that game because the twins are always trying to find a solution, but they never quite have it themselves. So they're reaching out to other people, they're trying to ask people that right. they ask if they can do stuff and they're told no. Like it's yeah, that it's almost twins off season vid game, right? I think that's a great call because I couldn't think of a game show because obviously there's liabilities here. There aren't enough game shows where people actually get hurt. It was like, well, American Gladiators wasn't really a game show, but people kind of risked injury. But I don't think of Gladiators and think of the Twins. There's zero fight in this group right now. Right, 100%. So they're almost pro wrestling. I mean, that's what Gladiators was. was Slightly less scripted, but it sure feels like it. Yep, 100%, right? Was there more than one for the Twins? Because I went Price is Right and kind of stopped. No, I watched them right now, and it's the gong show. Yes, it is. um, You know, you You've got the you've got the um, what's his name the dancing machine that would show up every so often and, and people would like that kind of like the twins have a guy come in and you're like oh I like that guy and now he's gone and he'll come back uh, but yeah so the the best thing about the gong show or match game wasn't necessarily the game right it's all the interplay it was around the, the yeah it's yeah. around the game you know and so with the twins the game isn't all that much fun but they've got good broadcasters and they've got good you know, on field guys, they got good writers. And so it's all the other stuff. Sorry. It's all the, other, he's very animated. Other he's stuff, talking right. with his hands and sometimes the hand hits the microphone and things go kitty wampus. So, so yes, I think the twins fit multiple ones, but it's usually because the game's not that great, but the other stuff's fun. Well, and I went deal or no deal again, because how many times do free agent names get floated around the twins during the off season? And you wait and you wait and you wait. And then you hear that somebody else signed them anyway. So, we are the kings of saying no deal. You know, the Twins might be closer to the Hunger Games than any of these games, right? Where the last guy standing is the one we get. Right. So, yeah. Uh, let's let's bounce over to the Vikings. Okay. They, they've got a big event There's a lot weekend. for yeah, them. There is. I agree with that. Because just what's going on next week begs itself to plenty. Because I did say, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Because Quasi's resume sure makes it seem like he is one of the smartest people in the sport. His draft track record certainly doesn't lend itself to that. So I kind of started there. I also went with, I think you brought this up earlier, classic concentration. Because my goodness, if you're ever going to be laser focused on what your draft class is going to look like, it better be this Thursday. But that was focusing just on this week. I think if we go 10,000 foot view, big picture, 
there's a lot more we can play with here. Well, see, and and for this current week, it feels like the dating game. Yeah, like this is because you're courting everybody, you're court, but yep. you're not committing to anybody yet. You're you're listening. You're asking some questions that you know. What kind of tree are you? And the stuff that they used to do in the dating game, and uh, yeah, you're hoping to go home with the right person. Well, and I also thought of Wheel of Fortune, and this was probably too detailed, but you know what do they do? Most of Wheel of Fortune, they spin the wheel. Well, there are two spots that you can't land on and have success: lose a turn and bankrupt. I hope for the first round draft picks that there's not two spots that don't pan out. And as of right now, they better not be 11 and 23. Well, I, how about this one? This is this was my draft one. So they're sitting there, and, and Quazy hits the button. He goes, no whammies. Press your luck. Right? Press yes, your no luck. whammies, no whammies. Stop. Oh, shoot, yep. we got Lewis seen again. Exactly. <laughs> and we played that <laughs> game already. Let's not do that again. Press your luck was fun. For me, it, you know, it sucks when a contestant gets a whammy, but that was the most fun because all the little skits that they do going yep, across the screen. Exactly correct. But when it comes to the Minnesota Vikings, that won't be funny anymore if that's what happens on right. Thursday. It's the Mort's Boringer pick. You right. Know, oh, whammy. Or basically the last two classes worth. Last three. Yes. Good point. I also thought of Jeopardy. And even though this doesn't have much to do with how the game show works, just the title of the show itself, because if this draft class doesn't go well, some jobs and the future of the franchise, serious jeopardy involved there. Oh, a hundred percent. And honestly, you know, just taking a step back, if Quazy drops the ball on this draft, he's Gonsville. And I'm not even talking about the quarterback. I'm talking about zero depth again, right? So I mean, we've got three drafts in a row where there's like four guys that play. Everybody else is gone. Well, and that's the other part of Wheel of Fortune, because supposedly, heavy on supposedly, because that's again for the nine millionth time, my problem with the draft, everybody wants to go, this guy's great, this guy's terrible. You have no idea. You have no idea. But supposedly, there's five, six guys that you'd hit on at one position. But you may not. So it's completely Wheel of Fortune. And and the draft, Nick, the, the, the guys that are doing the draft, that's like password. Right, because they're see, giving- I thought maybe you just Freudian slip because you said the draft Knicks. That's the one quarterback I hope they don't get. Yeah, right. that's also true. Right, but the but uh, I don't know why because I don't know anything about how they're going to pan out at the pro level. They're trying to give you you know words without giving you the word and yeah. trying to get you to guess what they're trying to get you to guess, but they don't want you to guess. I was yeah. going to say, is it basically password? It is because we're giving clues, but we're not necessarily getting the answer right. Hundred percent, what it is, and you still get credit, right? You still look good if you get a couple of them right. Right, so. Yeah, let's finish it. Let's finish it off with the Wolves because they're going to playoffs, Brian. I don't well, know and there's that. there's a lot to unpack here too because my first thought was Family Feud because I know they're not related, but whether it be Mark Laurie and A Rod and Glenn Taylor, but there's a whole lot of feuding. I know that's not how the game show works, but survey says if they don't figure out the ownership situation. Yeah, well, mine on the same idea was the dating game, or sorry, the newlywed game, right? Because they're sort of together. Right. Yeah, and they're do you asking, truly have a new bride or not? Right. And you're asking a lot of questions that maybe they do, maybe they don't know the answer to, and sometimes it ends up in divorce. And so, yes, that that's the newlywed game was the first thought with those two guys. But the the one that remember I said to start with, sometimes it's not the game itself, it's the people around it. Right. So this is where deal or no deal comes in with the with the Timberwolves because of Howie Mandel. Well, and does it, Howie Mandel is a little goofy. He's a goofball, and Glenn right. Taylor kind of qualifies that Bingo. way. And, and that's it. <laughs> let's not say that Mark Laurie and A-Rod don't. Yeah. They're a little goofy in a different sense. Uh, well, at least we know A-Rod is. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, sometimes we talk about uncomfortable game show hosts because it seems that that's a theme here, right? Yeah. There's Alex Trebek, and then there's a bunch of guys that are a little uncomfortable. Well, Pat Sajak's been at it for basically a lifetime. Yeah, but when he first started, he was a little uncomfortable. Better game show host than talk show host, but I digress. <laughs> yes, no, that that's fact. And and you're a little uncomfortable with, with that whole, there's there's not really a clean horse in that Timberwolves ownership group. And they all feel a little bit like Howie Mandel. So that's another reason to go double there because there's a little bit of slime involved with everybody involved there in the ownership is. situation. <laughs> but there was also part of double there. I don't know if you remember this or not, but they would ask you a question. And if you knew the answer, you could answer and you could pass and take the physical challenge. I think that's what the Wolves have in front of them right now is a physical challenge named the Phoenix Suns. Who's gonna Can get, they do this? Who's going to get the spray whipped cream? That's the question. That was always my favorite. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know for sure. But I'll tell you this. It may also be singled out for this team because if the Twins are as terrible as they look right now and the Vikings do or don't hit a jackpot this week coming up, which we're not going to know for months, the Timberwolves are going to be singled out as the team that Minnesota needs to follow something 
for the next month or so. And what are the odds five years ago? You just said in five years, the Twins are going to start horribly. The Vikings will still be looking for a quarterback. The Wilds will make the playoffs. But the, the, the target the center seed. will be the Mecca because <laughs> the links will always be decent. Cheryl Reeve won't make it any other way. Which one of our guests? But then the Wolves, about? you're going to need them in a big way. Yeah, the, the guests in hour number two are going to be basketball-centric for the first couple. There's going to be three. Vensi Glenn in his usual spot, though, too. Can we get him to care about the draft today? He's been like me, where he doesn't necessarily want to discuss that. Well, it's, this is the week, so if you're going to care about it at all, this is the week to talk about it, because next week, by this time, Brian, we're going to know who that quarterback is. Because, hey, we're going to be reflecting. Yep. We're going to, we're but that's gonna, the worst part. It's going to be paralysis by analysis. We know nothing. No, nah, it's paralysis. That's the, the the draft is paralysis right. by analysis. Well, that, again, has been yes. my big bugaboo with this whole thing. But I prefer it leading up to it versus afterwards because when people proclaim that this guy is the Messiah or this guy is the antithesis to that, why? Because of the way he walked up to the stage? He hasn't done anything. Oh, uh, I heard, finally I heard something that I agreed with on on J.J. McCarthy. The, there were two guys. One guy was complaining about McCarthy not having any big game throws. Right. And he, the guy said he's... Oh, the Jim Harbaugh handoff he's system. 27 and 1. One of the reasons he didn't have a lot of big game throws is that they won all the time. Like, he had great right. people around him, but he never screwed it up. So we, you say, he needs big game throws. Why won't you take a step back and tell me the other quarterbacks? Tell me about their big game throws. Right. And then it was silence, and he goes, that's my point. You point this out about this guy, but Drake May hasn't had any big game throws. Well, and what I respect about you is you follow the collegiate game enough to pose that question. What you get this time of year, and I'm probably guilty of it too, is a lot of people speaking as though they're the latest expert on this player, this player, this player, and this player. And I'm going to say, okay, tell me something about their college career that you didn't just hear in the last two weeks. And you usually get crickets. Right. Did you know Drake May, aside from when he played Minnesota? For most people, probably not. Yeah. Did you know Michael Penix until the playoffs? For most people, probably not. Well, they did if they followed Gophers at all because he killed them as an Indiana player. Okay. Fair enough, says the Gopher Bobo on the, the dais. The, the but crazy. J.J. McCarthy, till they won it all, did you really care about him? No, you were looking at how good Michigan was everywhere, mainly their defense. I, I agree with you. And it, let's go back to Drake May for just a second. Sure. Drake May... People want to for say, just a second, at, because I also want to say we started this conversation talking about we have basketball guests today, and look, look how quick look we got at, to the draft instead. Thanks, Vincey. Look, yeah, at, right? look at look at Drake May and how many people right now are saying how bad his last year was. Well, he lost all of his receivers and his offensive coordinator. So the expecting this year to be as good as last year is kind of a folly. Right. Like, did you like his stuff this year? Considering you loved him last year, did you still like it with all the turmoil? Okay. Well, then I think that makes it pretty good. Well, and I still think, and again, I am not an expert in this area, but whether or not you loved or hated what you saw on Saturdays from player X, Y, or Z, what did you see that you think transfers to Sunday? Now I sound like I spent a lot of time with Vensi because I can already hear him at about 1145 today. Can you play on Sunday? That's all I care about. I want to ask you about how much the place you fall into uh, impacts your success as a career. Because if you think about a quarterback going to New England right now, where they have nothing. They have their right. running backs okay. They have no they have coach Mayo. And you have a defensive coach. Or you, can you have a to, brand new coach. Or you can go to Minnesota where you have two wide receivers that we know are quality. Your tight end's coming back. He's quality. The running attack, I think Aaron Jones makes it good. And, a, and an offensive quarterback coach, um, head coach. I think, I mean, Minnesota is set up to take one of those quarterbacks. And you can and learn from a guru see. like Sam Darnold. Well, you but you learn, learn from a guy who's gone through heck and back. So maybe you do learn from Sam Darnold. Absolutely. So we're closing this segment, talking about the draft. We'll close the show doing the same. In between, we've got a lot. Hour number two is guest filled. We have the Timberwolves strength and conditioning coach that actually goes by a different title. Eric Muter will join us about five after 11. And then a local hero, Gianna Neepkins at 11.25. That should be fun. Yeah. A little bit of a tie into the links there as well. Yeah, no, I'm excited to talk to Gianna about our, the newest Nick, newest links. Absolutely, and we're closing out with Let's Make a Deal as our bump out music. Will the Vikes do that or not? Will they go card sharks on the bit? Speaking of cards, whammy. No gonna play it at Hoops next Saturday. Dave's not available, but we got somebody who is to talk about next weekend. We're the Northland Sports Page. Stick around, we'll be right back. Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, 
Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And we're back on the Northland Sports Page. A little shaggy, it wasn't me. And normally this segment goes to Dave Hoops, but if you ask him today, hey, how'd it go on the radio? He'd say it wasn't me. We've got a great fill in, though. We'll get to her in just a moment. But before we do, Hoops Brewing, one of our great sponsors, we have several, Dave Cook. Absolutely. Let's start with Mike Regan at Christensen Group Insurance. The Blackwoods Group, including their locations in Two Harbors, in Proctor, Tavern on the Hill, Blackwater right downtown, and the flagship on London Road. Mount Royal Bottle Shop, Stewart's Bike Sports and Trophies, Comfort Systems of Duluth, Kohler Toyota and Kohler Hyundai, Advantage Emblem and Screen Printing, Krause Heating and Cooling, your Carrier HVAC authorized dealer, Aurola Architecture Studio, and... Hoops Brewing. Absolutely. Hoops Brewing, one of our favorite places to be. Dave Hoops loves doing this show. By the way, he is judging the World Cup of Beer event again this weekend. He's in Vegas, a little busy. We can give him a free pass, but still give him some love on the show. He so loves that event. Too. I know. We've talked about it a hundred times, but it's still, it amazes me that after the first round, you can still honestly judge a beer. Like at some point, aren't you just like, ah, oh, this one's good too. I was going to say, assuming you're consuming to make your judgment by about round four, I'd be like, yeah, that one's perfect. <laughs> Like that one, too. Absolutely. So Hoops Brewing is a blast. Next weekend, it certainly will be because there's going to be a fundraising cribbage tournament going on at Hoops Brewing. I will be there later Saturday afternoon, not playing in the tournament, but that's okay. It's about the fundraising instead. And here to tell us about it is one of the Enas that puts this on. Nina Fredrickson joins us. Nina, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Now, this is becoming kind of old hat for you. You've been making some radio appearances, doing some fundraising, have you not? I have on the North 103.3. Yeah, I work at PBS North, and so that's our um, partner. So I've been helping at a fundraising drive. So I've been on the radio a little bit on there, too. Absolutely. That's why Dave commented oh, that you've already got that professional. professional radio voice. It's good to hear that <laughs> one of the three of us at least has Correct. that. Oh, no. But again, next Saturday. Well, if you say so. But again, next Saturday, some cribbage pros will want to be down there. A lot of people have participated in this before. I joked with you yesterday that... This is not the first annual of this type of event. And when we worked in TV together, we know that you're not even supposed to say first annual, but you've been doing this for a while. Yeah. So I was talking to Alina last night, the other Ina, because our cribbage turn- tournament tournament is called 15-2 and a pair of Enas. And we've been doing this for seven years, this tournament. I can't believe it's been seven years. And we've had the, the honor to be hosted by Hoops Brewing for three years now. So I'm really uh, thankful for Dave Hoops for letting us use their space and have a fun time doing it. It does make for a terrific venue. Now, I called it a fundraising cribbage tournament. That sounds all well and good, but tell everybody what the fundraising part is for. Yeah, so Alina and I are part of a team called Dragon Butts on the Right because we are part of an MS-150 team that bikes June 8th and 9th from Proctor High School all the way to Hinkley, spend the night and ride from Hinkley to White Bear Lake. So that equals 150 miles. We ride that for two days to raise money for the MS Society. So that is what's awesome about it is our team is the smallest team that raises the most money here in Minnesota. Nice. What that means is over the last 12 years, because our team started in um, – 2013, uh, we have raised over a quarter of a million dollars for the MS Society as a team. So we're really proud of that because really we have all levels of bikers on our team. We have people that only ride, you know, this one weekend, and then we have people that ride all the time, but we have everyone in between. So what's really awesome about our team is that we're passionate about raising money for the MS Society. That is fantastic. I'm going to get a little bit personal with my next question, but I've known you a long time. I'm comfortable doing that. <laughs> At what point does dragon butts become really sore butts after doing 150 oh, miles? Goodness. Because the, the visual that you can't see, because radio is not a visual medium, is you were telling us the trek that you guys take. Dave and I both had our eyes kind of grow exponentially at the thought of this kind of trek. It was the you, white bear part. <laughs> exactly. How, how do you feel when this is done? So one nice thing is the MS Society supports us during the ride, which is fantastic. They make rest stops every like 10 to 15 miles. So you can get off your bike and kind of move around. 
And so then it makes it a little bit easier doing all these 150 miles. But really, truly, you should hear everyone that second day in Hinkley. Our first times, our butts hitting that seat. We're like, Ugh, what are we doing? <laughs> but we get we get we get used to it by Hinkley. And then we put our bikes in the garage for a couple of weeks because we don't want to see them. But it's it's a fun time. Brian, how many times have we done an event that we've been looking forward to when we first saw it? We were like, oh, this is great. We're going to sign up for that. And we're in the middle of it. We're like, boy, this sure sounded good in January. Yeah. Why did why did we do this? <laughs> but I want to talk about the why with the fundraising and all that for the MS-150. How did you become part of this, Nina? When did this become a passion for you? Because you've mentioned seven years. You mentioned being passionate about it. When did this come to be an annual thing for you? So truly the first year I did it is because I bought a road bike and I'm like, I saw this event leaving from Proctor. I'm like, oh, let's do it. Like, that sounds like fun. You know, no passion like for the cause in me at the first year. The second year I met before the people that have MS. I met people who have family members that have MS and how this disease affects their family. And it really hit home for me. Like anyone can get MS really, truly. And what it does to your family, it's can be devastating. And so I wanted to be part of that project. And so there are people on our team that are affected the same way that have MS themselves or have family members or friends that do. And so it really hits home and it makes it something that you really want to do and help out as the way you can. That makes perfect sense. It makes for a great story as well. We are talking with Nina Fredrickson. She is replacing Dave Hoops today because we're still talking about Hoops Brewing because their fundraising cribbage tournament put on by the Enas, 15-2 in a pair of Enas, takes place next Saturday at Hoops Brewing. Now, I already said I'll be down there, but it starts while this show is still going. So I come down later and I do not play cribbage. I want to make it clear to anybody listening, that's perfectly acceptable. You can still come down, enjoy yourself, and make a donation as well. Yeah, so a little bit more about the event itself. Like, like Brian said, people come down and support because we have raffle. We have a silent auction. So you can come down and support that way or just give a plain old donation or you can play cribbage. We have people show up by themselves because it's, it's a partner's game. So bring your partner. But if you don't have one, come by yourself and we can partner you up with someone. We have registration starting at 11 and then the game starts playing around 1145. And so you're guaranteed five games. So that makes it kind of fun as well. You get to play. You get to enjoy some hoops and brews like meet people around you, meet some people from the team. And it's just a fun day, like just to hang out at hoops and have some fun. It is one of my favorite days of the year, to be honest. And I've always appreciated that because you are guaranteed the five games. But usually by the time I get there, I'm talking to people that they said, well, we got eliminated 20 minutes ago. They are there for the day, the silent auction and everything. You really keep people in house. It's a blast. Yeah. And usually we wrap, it's wrap around five And, you know, really we want to reiterate any level of player is welcome because there's people who just play this one time a year or there's people that play all the time. But what's funny is like my brother and dad play and they'll do super well in like the pool play and then they get into the bracket and they lose the first game. And they're always like, oh, we always lose, but they always have fun doing it. Well, and I've seen the photo evidence. Let's be honest, for the winners is a pretty cool trophy, is there not? Oh, there is. Our um, team, one of our team captains, Ted, built this beautiful trophy. And if you win, you get your name on the trophy. Dave, I'll tell you this. You've seen our fantasy football trophy. I still have it. I'm a few engravings behind because I've never won it, yet the trophy stays at my house. <laughs> this cribbage tournament trophy puts our fantasy football league trophy to shame. Maybe we should just give you a Sharpie, and you can just write <laughs> people's names on it. Yeah, there you go. And if I if I decide that they cheated, I impose sanctions, and I just blur just, them out. Yeah, and over time, it's going to wear off anyway. You can just keep using the same spaces. No question. So, Nina, I need to be a responsible journalist here. If people want to get involved in either one of these two things, whether it's for the MS-150 this year or next, because I don't know what kind of time deadlines they have, but you've provided us with a lot of information on some cool things. Somebody out there listening is going, I want to play cribbage next weekend. Somebody's going, I want to get involved in the MS-150. Tell me how they can do both. So one thing, we'll talk cribbage tournament first, and that is you can email Alina Granholm, um, but really truly text her that's going to probably be the best way uh 218-310-2296 and that will get you just text hey i have my name is so and so and i would like to play next saturday and she'll get you on the list or just show up you can just show up that's totally cool show up at 11 check in and you're you're ready to play 
But then for the MS-150 ride, I know they take people up to like two weeks before the ride. And we, you could join our team. We're, we're happy to have you be part of the Dragon Butts on the right. So join our, all you have to do is Google like MS-150 Minnesota. And it'll be like one of the first things that pop up. Click on it. And right when you open that page, it says join event or donate. And you can do either. We would enjoy either one of that. Um, if you hit donate, you can search for my name, just put in Nina, N-I-N-A, and then be the first one to donate to me. Because I just looked, I don't have any donations yet. So that would be great. Donate to me. Not well, I hope we just change that. I, I've been first yeah. in previous years, but hopefully the power of the airwaves just changed that. Now we're going to shift gears a little bit, because if you're truly going to replace Dave Hoops during Dave Hoops' segment on the Northland Sports page, we do a little something with him that is basically without a title for good reason, because there's not always rhyme or reason to what we do. I call it Dave Cook's life-altering questions. It's kind of a myriad of topics. You never know what it's going to be about. But I briefed him, and I know you guys have met before and had a blast Uh during my 40th birthday at Target Field. So he knows his audience a little bit, and he's got questions for all three of us to participate in today. Dave, go ahead. Okay, we're going to do sports first. Okay. All right. So actually, they all have a little bit to do with sports, but they're not all on Target like this. Okay. Any chance you guys saw the Detroit Lions third uniform that came out a couple days ago? I did. I'm going to doubt did Nina did, okay. but I might be making assumptions. That's, that's okay, because I can explain it. Okay. So they have probably the worst arena league-looking football helmet. In, in I mean, it's this bright blue that has nothing to do with Lions colors. It's just awful. So we've seen a lot of awful third uniforms. Now we're starting to see it with helmets. I am wondering if you had a chance to design the Vikings' third uniform. It could just be a third helmet. What would you do? Interesting. Nina, I'm going to let you go first, but before you do, I thought Dave was going the route of helmets. What's your favorite helmet? And knowing you like I do, I would have said nacho, but go ahead. (laughs) That is so true. Twins game, get the helmet of nachos, just saying. Um, You know, I would probably put some braids coming out of the side and then the chin strap that comes down, like, becomes the, like, Viking braids. I like it. I like it a lot. I really do like that answer. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's fantastic. I actually saw what I would do with their uniforms on Twitter today, and I spend way too much time on Twitter, as the kids call it, X, whatever. Uh, It was a blackout type look, and it was all black with purple numerals and purple lettering. And, of course, they used JJ, so it looked pretty sharp. But I guess I'd have to – I'll put it on our Twitter account and let people see what I'm talking about. See, Brian, I would do the exact opposite. I would love to see an all-white Vikings helmet. Like, I think an all-white Vikings helmet would look pretty cool. I yeah. don't know if I'd do it regularly, but I think, you know, once in a while it would look I still think cool. the nacho helmet wins. Go ahead. Well, speaking <laughs> of nacho helmets, all right, let's talk food for a second. We hang out with John Carlson way too much. <laughs> Just and, ask him. And, right. And John Carlson samples hot dogs everywhere and then gives us his critique. I am wondering, Nina, Brian, what food option – is available at a major arena, whether it be like the X or Target or if you guys have gotten something else, that's actually better than a college or a high school food. Like hot dogs, John tells us hot dogs are the same. Boy, I disagree because I'm completely guilty of, and Nina knows this because we were at the home opener together a couple weeks ago, I'm completely guilty of just absolutely housing my hot dog mid-national anthem at the home opener because it was so much better at Target Field than anywhere else. And I felt very disrespectful in the patriotic sense by taking my first bite and going, you know, that was darn good. And then I finished the whole thing in a song that's about 90 seconds long. So, boy, that's, that's tough to answer because to me, the food gets better as the level of play gets better. So I think everything's better at the pro level. Target Field, one I haven't had in a while that I want to, is the steak sandwich again. But the problem is when I had it last, and Nina, I think you were with me, this might have been Target Field's first year, we were in line for four innings. Go ahead. Yeah, that's true. And I, I agree with you. As the play gets better, the the nachos get better. Because, you know, me and my nachos, I have to have those. Yes. And so Target Field has the best sports nachos, for sure. Interesting. Because I always thought that nachos came from the same bag. Uh, and they were put into the helmet. Do they even pour them in the helmet now, or do they still in the bag when you get them? I defer to the helmet oh, expert. No. Go ahead. Yeah, it like they put the chips in, and then they like you can get chicken or beef chili on it, and then cheese sauce and the pico and all the fun things. Oh yeah, that wow. they win. Now Nina's got our listeners absolutely salivating. In the Legends Club, there actually <laughs> is a nacho bar, and you create your own. That's pretty sweet. Very nice. Yeah. Hey, okay, last question, real quick. 
Um, Brian and I talk all the time about where we would go if we were going to go watch a game. But Ooh. if you had the opportunity to go to a weekend uh, or maybe even a week, perfect weather, doesn't matter the sport, and you could watch two games of different teams, what trip would that be? Of different sports? It could be sports. could be just like it could be Chicago because you want to see the White Sox on a Saturday and the Cubs on a Sunday. I, I guess that's... What about the caveat oh. of have I been there before or not? Does that uh, matter? That, nope, that's totally fine. All right, Nina, go ahead. I just wanted the parameters okay. established. So this is going to sound super cheesy, but I enjoy going to games with Brian. So wherever Brian chooses, I'll go with him. Oh, that my, oh my God. That's adorable. That does sound super cheesy. And now my wife so. is chapped or she knows she's coming with, and that'll be a blast <laughs> for all with. three of us. She's always coming with. Yeah. I saw the pictures yeah. from the home opener. She was chapped. Yeah. Like the wind was <laughs> awful and the cold. She looked like she was on a ski hill. I know, no doubt. That it looks like true. we're doing the polar plunge every time we go to the home <laughs> opener. It's really a sight to behold. Mm-hmm. All right, so since Nina's deferring to me, I hope you'll join me on this trip because we're going to wait until whatever summer this is possible. But I'm going to Vegas when the new look Oakland Athletics are now playing in Vegas. Yes. And I want to yeah. go to a Golden Knights hockey game. Yes, it'd be indoors, so that perfect weather thing wouldn't matter. But all I've heard is the atmosphere, the ambiance, hockey in Vegas, you got to see it. That's actually really good. I hadn't thought about that. And I'll tell you what, good. knowing that I'm going with Nina, who was a good hooper in her own day, I'll probably throw in a Vegas Aces game as well. Hopefully they're playing the Lynx. Timing. I'll make it a trio. Timing is very well. That's the kind of weekend we're, we're wondering about. Absolutely. What about you? You didn't answer yet. No, I think that everything being perfect, I would probably go to Missouri and I would watch the Cardinals on a Saturday and the Royals on a Sunday. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. That oh, that one sounds good too. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. so Nina and I are crashing your party as well. Just That's so right. you know, everybody is welcome. So I guess we're all going. We're Absolutely. all going to all the places. So I'm going to round it out by saying this. Speaking of crashing a party, folks that want to next Saturday again, tell them how because Hoops is the place to be. Oh yes, they're not crashing. They're very welcome to come to fifteen two and a pair of Enas on Saturday, April twenty seventh. Check in at eleven. Gameplay at eleven forty five. Don't have to be super good at cribbage. You just have to have a passion to donate to MS Society. I feel like you have a passion for fundraising and a passion for being on the radio. This was awesome. Thank you very much. I know I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Absolutely. That is Nina Fredrickson. That was a blast. Yeah, that was really good. Dave Hoops has got a good little replacement if he needs it from time to time. Truly a pro. You can hear it when she's talking. There's no nerves. Yes. You know what I mean? She's left us with tough acts to follow. Following yeah. this break, we'll be by or sell. We hope you buy what we're selling here on the Northland Sports page. We will be right back. This podcast is sponsored by Ramp. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's business cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp for free. Just go to ramp.com slash easy. Ramp.com slash easy. R-A-M-P dot com slash easy. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC. Terms and conditions apply. Back here on the Northland Sports page. Time to play buy or sell to round out hour number one before a guest-filled hour number two begins. But buy or sell, we want you to buy everything our sponsors are selling. Absolutely. Let's start with Krause Heating and Cooling, your carrier HVAC authorized dealer. Advantage Emblem and Screen Printing. Kohler Hyundai and Kohler Toyota, Comfort Systems of Duluth, Stewart's Bike Sports and Trophies, Mount Royal Bottle Shop, The Blackwoods Group, including their locations in Two Harbors and in Proctor, Tavern on the Hill, Blackwater right downtown, and on London Road, Mike Regan at Christensen Group Insurance, Hoops Brewing, and Arola Architecture Studio. Very, very grateful for each and every one of our sponsors. If you'd like to join our sponsorship family, let us know here at Town Square Media or personally let Dave and I know. We love those kinds of messages. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's really good when we're able to reach out and touch somebody and they're interested in the show, they're interested in the product. We'll get you an invoice and it'll be fun to go. Absolutely, we will. So buy or sell, that's the name of the sponsorship game. It's also the name of this segment. And here's how it works. I'm going to give a sentence with each of the four men's major sports leagues. If Dave agrees, he's going to say buy and he's going to tell me why. If he disagrees, he's going to say sell and he's going to tell me why. 
his responsibility, determine the order in which we play league by league, and then, of course, his piping hot takes each and every week. We're going to start with the National Hockey League. Okay, the National Hockey League. Marc-Andre Fleury has re-upped with the Minnesota Wild right at the tail end of the season. Buy or sell that that excites you? Boy, I'm not sure. It does I love either. that I start right there. I, I think I think the answer is sell. It doesn't excite me, and I think there's some trepidation. Once again, we brought in a an old timer, a, a Hall of Famer, right? But an old timer with no no trade move, no trade clause. So uh, if we're in the same situation we were in this year, we can't move Flurry. Um, we've got everybody said best prospect, best goalie prospect in the world sits down in Iowa. And what, so that means you got to move Gus, right? Yeah, you almost have to move Gus. It doesn't do Wallstead any good to play in Iowa right. any longer. And so what it is, it's another block for a, a young guy to come up and play when they don't have any money. I mean, let's get Wallstead up to speed so when there's funding available, now all of a sudden we have a goaltender who's got some experience under his belt. But instead we hired – I mean, if you're going to bring a guy in, it's flurry. But did you need to bring him in? Okay, so you make a lot of great points, so I'm and I would have made most of them, but then taken the opposite stance, as I've been known to do, because you just laid it out beautifully for me, but it's exactly why I buy, because I'm buying that it excites me, because to me, it means that the Gus bus is going to be providing services in another city next year, and I want to see what you get for them, so that's exciting. It's exciting because you've got one of the best ever to play the game, to mentor supposedly the best Correct. prospect in the game. The more that they can corroborate on ideas... I'm good with that, but you make a great point with how he was brought in because I'm going to make a comparison that might seem strange, but hear me out. Is Marc-Andre Fleury basically Jim Tomey? Because it was a transaction where this team is really going for it, and this should get us over the hump. It didn't really get us anywhere, but the person that was acquired immediately went into lore of the franchise. We treat Marc-Andre Fleury like he's this longtime one of us. There's already been talk of when he's done, he needs to be in the front office or in the coaching staff. Hang his jersey we, from the rafters. We kind of did the same thing with Jim Tomey, and he was here for the blink of an eye. I'm excited about it, but not for anything that has to do with Flower himself. I, I will tell you that the, the the juxtaposition of bringing Fleury back and having the general manager say, hey, you know, Gus could be in better shape. Um, I, do th I do think those two things may have had something to do with each other. I tend to agree with you. By the way, was this the most blasé Minnesota Wild season in a long time? Now, I get it. They missed the playoffs for the first time in a long time. But I said last week, the only thing that was fun and heavy on the air quotes, radio is not a visual medium, was the roller coaster because, ah, that corner's being turned. Oh, forget it. Oh, no. It was, you know, we don't normally have that inconsistent of a season with anybody. It's, Usually if we're bad, we're bad. And if we're good, we're pretty good. It's like a painting, a gray painting with a couple little dots of, of, Light. So their Capri Soft season was great, right? Boldy coming around at the end was was great. Wallstead playing Faber is a big ball of light, right? But right. everything else is gray. So it's like it's like being in a fogged in room with taillights because you can see that there's a couple of things that are good that you can see, but everything else you it's just blah. It's just gray. Did you happen to catch Capri Soft's end of season presser? No, because a reporter asked him one of the worst questions I've ever heard, and I thought, what kind of controversy are you trying to stir up? That isn't there. And Kaprizov handled it brilliantly because the reporter asked, what if next year at this time we're sitting here and this team has missed the playoffs two seasons in a row? How is your feeling? What is your mindset if that happens? And Kaprizov kind of went, who, who says we're not going to make the playoffs next year? How, how can we go into that hypothetical? And I'm watching it going, well, I would have been the smart aleck in the group, and I would have raised my hand and said, okay, let's say they win the Stanley Cup next season. What's your mindset <laughs> a year from now then? I mean, if, if we're going to grasp at straws for what next year is going to bring right now, yeah. what a silly question. Right, and and the thing is, is you don't you don't know these kids. Ogren looked really good, yeah. right? Um, the young looked crop good. of talent is very – Rossi figured it out. Rossi figured it out, and, and you know, the, the – um, the Yurov kid that's coming that'll hopefully comes from Russia as well. He's going to be ready to go. Like, legitimately, if we could, if we didn't sign all these vets to no trade contracts, I know we would be. Uh, I think we'd be pretty excited about next year. To be honest, I think you would too. Now with Faber's latest news of playing the majority of the season very much with an injury, that came out at a good time. I don't know that the Calder Trophy votes are completed yet. That's going to seal it for him because it should. It should, but just read the stuff. Uh, like I was reading The Athletic the other day. Like, 
Connor Bernard's first season, one for the record books. And I'm like, yeah, but he was a minus like a thousand. Right. So yeah, it is one for the record books for a lot of reasons. But now that, you know, he played the injury or his, his backers played the injury card all year. Well, now Faber can say, yeah, you know what? I was busted up too, but shoot, I played. Right. My concern is this. You're absolutely right on the plus minus. I'm afraid that the hockey bobos view plus minus the way baseball people bring up war. Where the casuals go, what the hell does that even mean? Yeah, right. So that stat won't be focused on. Yeah. All right, one down, three to go. All right, I want to talk about the the team right now that might be the worst team in the, in the league. Let's talk about the Minnesota Twins. All right. Uh, let's talk about, wait, wait. Stop, Major League stop. Baseball. Let's talk about Major League Baseball. And it does relate to the Minnesota Twins. So oh, thank you. lucky guess by you, Dave Cook. <sighs> Speaking of that, that is your name, Dave Cook, right? Yeah. So I don't know if when you were playing high school or so collegiate weird. athletics, if being cooked was a good thing, if that meant you made a good play. But buy or sell that it's 6-12 and 12 on April 20th with 144 games left, the Minnesota Twins are already cooked. I'm going to sell, but this is more like selling on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but don't go on social media about the Twins right now. It's a cesspool. No, I. they're so injured. But the problem, so I told you about this Glasgow baseball game last, uh, the other night, where we had like a half a dozen pop-up outs. Like, we should have beat Hamlin if we put the ball in play anywhere all right. day. And that's um, what the Twins can do. That's my point. My point is that the, the Twins have a player on second down by one, and it's strikeout, ground ball to first, ground ball to third, inning over. Well, no, it's probably not that because you had two guys hitting the ball. That's not happening. Two yeah. ground outs, you're <laughs> grasping at straws. Got it, got it, got it. But that's, uh, that's yeah. They're cooked. I'm going to sell that they're completely cooked because there is 144 games left. And if you said on April 20th, you're not going to have Royce, Carlos Correa, Duran, okay, sort Even of Kepler. Kepler being a factor, you just took away a lot of the key guys that this team was going to lean on. So there is that. But there's also a general malaise around this team right now, and I don't know how you get rid of that. Even as a fan, and I love the Twins way too much, I've been called everything under the sun for my unconditional love of the Twins, which basically mirrors what I make fun of Wild fans for, and I get it. But even as you watch the game, you you sit down and you go, okay, maybe today is going to be different. And then they fall behind one to nothing, and you go, well, this is over. And mm -hmm. if, you shouldn't be in a this is over mode at one to nothing. But you are, because their offense is just struggling so much. Struggling isn't the word, but I don't want this to be my last show in radio, so I'll save the other words. And then when you say a team's margin for error is so thin, that's usually a disguised way of saying they're not very good. Mm -hmm. And I'm very curious if they're just not very good. I know their depth has been taken away, and maybe their depth has been exposed because we talk about the Vikings being paper thin. You look at the lineup that the Twins have to trot out there now, whether they're struggling or not, just the names, you're going, are, are we that paper thin? Uh, and the depth the depth was injured. I mean, that's that's the thing about it. Yeah. And, but I will, I'm going to say this, though. We talked about at the beginning of the year before we threw pitch one that our pitching staff was top heavy, and then we had Ober and Ryan, who we were hoping. Well, Ryan was part of the top. It was Ober and Paddock, and then whatever well, was fifth. So we, top heavy was Pablo and Ryan to me. See, for me, it's Pablo, and then it's Ober and Ryan because Paddock had all of four innings in relief in the in the, and then we have Louis Varlin who was aces in the bullpen. And so people would keep telling you, he was so good last year. Yeah. No. He For was one series, great. he was really good. He was great in the bullpen. He was yeah. an awful starter. Yes. And guess what? He's still an awful starter. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, we didn't do and then the million dollars thing with the, with the TV contract. Well, you got a bunch of that back, and you didn't spend it. And so normally... And this is what you get. Normally, Steve and I disagree on cheap pull -ads. I think it's funny. It's overplayed, that's all. But It's accurate, it's just overplayed. But in this, this case... What else can it yeah, be? Yeah. You you got twenty million or forty million dollars back from your contract because you signed something. Yep. And you didn't spend a nickel of it. That's the problem because I used to think that when somebody goes cheaply pull ads, it's they want to downplay the twins, dismiss them without really having to think and talk about it. You're absolutely right. Now they can say that and you go, I, I have no I, argument. Right. I have no argument because there were players available when you got your money. And you try and not so, to get too worked up because it is April twentieth. There is a hundred plus games left. But I even look at last Sunday. They had a chance to win three in a row. They had a three-run lead in the eighth inning, and they blew it, and they lost. Mm -hmm. And normally you go, well, those games are going to happen. There's six months of this. This team needs every win they can find. No. And they blew that game. They blew a game late last night. Now, they did they blow it? No, they, they were in a tie game, and they lost. But you just 
again, margin for error is nothing when you have no star players to lean on. Right. It was a two, three years ago that we had this start, and, and they just never came back from it, and that's what we're looking at. Two down, right. two to go. Yep, let's go with the Wolves. All right, you're going to be disappointed because it's the National Basketball oh, Association, it and it is not about the Wolves this time. I think the league loves the playoff matchups they got. That might be an understatement. Yeah. Buy or sell, Nuggets-Lakers is the best of the bunch in round one. I'm going to sell that because, again, you're, 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 you, D'Lo has to be ridiculous for the Lakers to win. I, I think it's the Clippers-Mavericks. I think that the Mavericks' small backcourt is still, I don't know, they might be the best backcourt, but they don't well, have any. Kyrie and Luka work together. That's absurdly good. It is, but they don't have. They also can't cover um, Kawhi and PG thirteen. Like the, so, the strengths are opposite on both teams. Right. I think that's the best matchup. I do too, from a basketball standpoint. But I think marketability. It might be Lakers Nuggets because you've got the MVP and you've got this era's best player playing against each other in Joker and LeBron. Yeah. And I don't know that they can do much better than that if they're just trying to make money. The other one, they got a gift from the play-in tournament. You got Heat Celtics in round one. That was the Eastern Conference Finals last year. Those two teams know each other well. They don't like each other much. Who would have thought that a 1-8 in the East and a 2-7 in the West could be dynamite? Well, it's because of the 7s and the 8s. That's the Right. But the other thing, too, is you look in the West, and, and the 1-8 was a play-in matchup last year. You got Thunder and Pelicans, and the league's going, what? Yeah, that Thunder team is... Without Zion, I was shocked the Pelicans won, by the way. Handily, too. Um, well, not handily, but they, they took oh, over in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they, there was no doubt. They took the Kings. To I just the shocked Lemaire that, sure. but there was no doubt. Um, but, that, yeah, I just I, I think that that Pelicans team, we've talked about it for two years now, without Zion, and they're without Zion a lot, um, they're still a pretty good basketball team. All right, super quick in the NFL, give yes. me an abridged answer because we can touch on it with Vency as well. There's draft buzz galore. Finally, we get to round one Thursday night. The only two names you're hearing around the Vikings recently, those that go deeper say more, but the only two names you're really seeing are Drake May and J.J. McCarthy. Buy or sell, you're convinced that their first pick Thursday night will be one of those two. Buy. I really do think that if there's a way that they can go get uh, Drake May, they're going to go get Drake May. And if they can't get Drake May, they may sit there and wait for McCarthy and just to see how how real the McCarthy steam is. Because remember, coming into the offseason, he was a second to the early third round pick. And then Jim Harbaugh said he's the best quarterback in the draft. And people kind of said, oh, if Jim said so. I'm going to sell just to be contrarian, and I hope I'm wrong. I think they're going to go defense at 11, and Penix will slip to 23, and that's what you're walking away with. I have so bought into what Vince said about Penix. You just can't draft the lefty. That would be interesting. Chad Greenway backs that up too. So, But it's Quasi. So whatever somebody says you just can't do, he's probably like, I'll show you. That's true. He's shown us nothing drafting so far. Strong chance this one gets better. Speaking of strength, we talked to a guy responsible for it for the Timberwolves when hour number two begins. We are the Northland Sports Page. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hey, guys. Time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players. Pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks. Pick more. Pick less. It's that easy.